Okay, on this one you can see that we have a bunch of circles to create and trimming. We have one circle that's going to set up how far it is away from the center, and that's going to be that diameter. This 35 degrees, you can choose to do it at the beginning or at the end, and I'm going to say doing my rotation at the end. You see that the other two dimensions are nothing more than the inside and the outside rings around our shape. Okay, so first thing I'm going to start off doing is creating a circle with a diameter of 2.5. So circle, center, diameter, click here, and 2.5. On the quadrant is where I'm going to create my two circles that define the rings of, of this shape. So circle, center, diameter, at this quadrant, and it has a diameter of 1.5. Go back and choose circle, center, diameter, the same quadrant, our center, diameter is 1. Let's use the polar array option. Select these two rings. Next, I want to select this center as the center of my axis here, of my revolution. I have eight items. You can see that my shape is constructed. Now be careful that you do have this associativity turned off in this case. We are going to modify each of those circles. But I'll show you what to do just in case if you do accidentally leave this turned on. So if I have this turned on and I choose close array, you'll see that when I go to trim this, all of these will light up. The way that you're going to have to fix this is that you're going to have to use the explode command, which is here and then select the shape, enter. Now each one of these are individual circles so I can trim them. Okay, so now let's start trimming and we're going to start with one of the circles and I'm going to start with this one so I can see that this trims here so over and then under. And you're just going to keep kind of following this pattern around the whole shape. Now, if you do accidentally make some mistakes, and I wanted to show you this, that if you make mistakes inside of the command, and you accidentally wanted to trim these, don't escape out of the command. Just use the undo function that's inside of the command, and you can see that it will step you back and undo the last circles. So this is one of those things that any time that you're creating stuff of this nature, you're going to have a lot of trimming, and then sometimes it's a lot easier just not to escape out of the command as trimming. Okay, so I'll keep trimming around like so. And you can see that I'm starting with the outside one first. What I'm doing is making sure that I'm going under and over. And it looks like on the last one I did make a mistake, so let me go back and undo those. Okay. You can also see that you're going to have one of these rings that are going to look this way. Back to looking at this shape, you can see that this is the one that I'm referring to. That it has one that goes over, and then it goes over also along this end. So one of your circles is not going to be able to go totally over and under. The inside ones. So I'll start trimming away these lines here. And remember, I'm starting with kind of my nucleus one. This is the one that's the special one of all of them. And now I can start from here, I can look at my other circles and start trimming off what I don't need. So I can look at here, and you can see that now it's these rings that are going around here. And 
And there really is no magic way of doing this. It's just one of those things that you're going to have to fight through each time. So kind of referring back to the picture and making sure that you're trimming it correctly. Okay, you can see I'm all done with my trimming and everything looks nice. Now, we come to that dimension that I was talking to you about before, the angle. So at the bottom here, this is my special little nucleus ring here. And this is going this line here is going and I'll create a line on there as a visual aid for you. There's a line going here that's going across. If I rotate this up at that 35 degrees, it's going to move my nucleus up to where I don't want it. So you're kind of looking in your head and trying to realize what is the opt optimal way of doing this. So the way I like to look at this is that I can either rotate this up 35 degrees, which will put this out of position of where I want it. Or I can rotate it down 10 degrees, and that will put this actually where I need it to be. So let's take a look at that. Let's go to Rotate, and let's select everything. And if I select this line, and I want to rotate it downward, And remember that I'm going clockwise in this case, so it's a negative 10 degrees. If I was to put a line on here and measure it, that line should be at a 40 or at a 35 degree. Let's go ahead and delete those two lines or line and circle. And now you can see that this one is completed. And hopefully you enjoyed it and thanks for watching it.